having a tenant renting a property from you doesn't always increase the property's value. Sometimes it could actually hurt the property's value. Jeff from Georgia, this is your show. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. I'm your host, James Wise. Uh, just had another kid, folks, uh, so I'm coming to you guys from my home studio, right? That's what's great about real estate investing. We can do it remotely. We don't always need to be physically in place, which is definitely great for you, Jeff, right? You're in Georgia. Uh, the properties we're talking about are here in the Cleveland market. And um, here's the thing, right? This, uh, we're talking about single family house today, right? Let me pull it up for you. 1010 Riverside Drive, Elyria, 44035. Listed over a month ago at 59900 Now, if you go through the photos of this particular property, right, it's, it looks pretty damn nice, right? We got a nice open concept. We got, you know, fairly neutral color scheme throughout. We got uh, decent looking fixtures in the kitchen and the bath. For all intents and purposes, uh, the property looks great. As far as the neighborhood, dude, this is a solid neighborhood, solid C-class neighborhood. I like this neighborhood quite a bit. There is no reason that uh, under normal circumstances, this property would not immediately fly off the shelves at 59.9. Honestly, you could probably make the case that that's actually a little bit lower uh, than what it should be selling for. But this thing, it's not selling. Why is it not selling? I'll tell you why it's not selling. It's because it's got a tenant in there and that is actually hurting the value of this property. Now I know you, Jeff, and everybody else who watches Holton Wise TV, you guys, much like myself, we see tenants as assets. We see tenants as helping us operate our business, right? Our business is collecting rent. We are treating these homes uh, as financial investment vehicles, right? But you guys have to take a step back for a minute and remember that's not what they're necessarily intended for, right? Homes are intended for people to live in. And a lot of times they're not uh, gonna be priced based upon what somebody's willing to pay in rent, right? The market will be driven by owner occupied buyers. The nicer the neighborhood you get into, uh, the more so that's true, right? When you're in like a C-class neighborhood, it's, it's usually probably like 50-50 or 60-40 one way or the other, right? But when you get into like D and F class, it's almost all investors, right? Which leads me to this property, 59.9. Like I said, that should probably under normal circumstances be probably pretty low. But the particular situation here is we have a tenant in there and they're only paying $680 a month. So that is killing this property's value. And that's where, Jeff, I think you and I could step in and really take advantage of the situation. You see, under normal circumstances, if this property was empty, you'd have owner-occupied people looking at it and you'd have investors looking at it. Well, right now we got a tenant in there, so owner-occupied people are not interested, thus leaving us with only investors. However, the property should be renting for about $900 a month. Under normal circumstances, this is a $900 a month rental, but the sellers rent it for way too low, dude. It's not worth it to try to rent single family homes for anything other under 750. Honestly, I don't really like to go under eight, right? Uh, so like six to 80 for a single family home, it's just, it's just not worth the hassle, right? So the seller cut off all owner occupied buyers and now they've made it very unattractive to a lot of investors out there who may not understand that the market rent is actually much higher. So because of that, we're gonna take this little $680 rental, bring it in $8,000 a year, 8,160 to be exact, and we are going to try to beat the crap out of the seller. We're going to try to lowball them. And we're going to try to pick it up at 45000 because I think they're not putting their best foot forward. And I just think there is going to be a lack of interest based upon the stuff I've just been talking about, right? So currently, right, at 680, I anticipate an average of 407 going out the door to operate it. So I think it's going to make an NOI of 3200 or so a year, right? If you pick it up at 45 Gs, that's a 7.3 cap. And after we finance it out, 
you only ended the bad boy for 11,250, 14% return on your investment. Nothing amazing, like nothing to get super excited about. Like I would say if going forward, the property was only going to rent for 680 bucks a month for all of eternity, I would say, Jeff, dog, let's pass on this. There's no point to doing it. Definitely not a point to paying uh, 45 G's for it. But the fact that this is really a $900 rental disguised as a $680 rental, dude, you got to hop on this because I think that's going to allow you to pick that thing up at 45000 under normal circumstances, dude, we'd be able to sell that. Like if it's already running for like 900, dude, that's like a 65, $70,000 rental, just like that, bro. So we have a lot of meat on the bone here, right? So we're going to take advantage of the situation to try to squeeze out a discount, right? That's going to be the move here. As far as how we go from $680 in rent to 900, I think we should do it slowly, right? I think we take it over. Uh, take the tenant on, continue to collect their rent till their lease is expired, give them a 30 day notice that we're increasing the rent. And I think we just go up in steps, right? Go from 680 to 750. If they, they stay, cool. Then go from 750 to eight, then go from eight to 850 till we get all the way up to 900. If at any point in time during that, they don't want to do it, they want to move out. That's fine. That's great. We're going to probably have to do a very minimal turnover because a lot of the, the updates look done. I don't think we need to do new kitchens, new baths, or anything of that nature, right? We're just going to be cleaning it up, probably repainting it, maybe patching a couple holes, and then we should be good to go for our next tenant, bringing us in $900, thus really increasing your ROI. And as far as the mechanicals of this particular property go, uh, most of them are mid to end of life, right? So furnace, hot water tank roof, all mid to end of life. But we've calculated that stuff in there, right? If you look at the chart again, I've got a $34 budget every single month that I didn't even include, right? That's coming into you right now, right? Like your repairs, your maintenance, your vacancy, your non-payment, your CapEx, 34 each, 400 bucks uh, each for the year. So that's $1,200 that I didn't even account for in the NOI estimate I gave you, that 3,200 bucks, 3,276. That's in addition to another 1,200 that's probably coming home to you right now. But I didn't want you to count that 1,200 as your profit because eventually you're going to have to use that money to upgrade the home, right? These roofs, it's like a four, maybe $5,000 roof. They only last 30 years. And I believe we're probably mid to end of life on that roof. So you're going to have a $5,000 bill coming up, but then you don't got to worry about it for uh, 30 years. So that's why you're saving that money. Same thing with the furnace. They last about 30 years. They cost about three Gs, hot water tanks. They last about 15 years. They cost a G, right? So that extra money, I want you saving it up for things like that. And like the repairs and the maintenance, I want you saving that because when the tenant does move out, like I said, we're going to probably repaint it. And then vacancy non-payment, you know, these tenants that are currently there, they're paying right now, but in, in the real estate space, brother, you don't get to collect rent 100% of the time. If you did, it'd be great, but that's just not how the cookie crumbles. So we're calculating that stuff in, right? We're saving for that. So this deal is actually so much more profitable uh, than what it currently looks like, which is, again, is great for you and I, because I know the value of this deal. I think I've done a pretty good job illustrating it to you, uh, but hopefully the seller is having a rough time based upon all the things I mentioned. And that's why we're going to try to beat them up and try to steal it from them at 45000 So if that makes sense for you, Jeff, you want to move forward, reply to this private link, and uh, my team will get this offer written up, sent off to the seller, start negotiating with them. And of course, we'll make the contract contingent on your third-party home inspection just to verify all of my estimates and my guesstimates are correct. If for some reason they're not, that's cause for renegotiation or possibly exiting the deal. Everybody else, uh, just so you know, after we close on that deal with Jeff, my team will handle all the property management, the maintenance, the repairs, the whole shebang. So if you're curious to know how our property management works and all that jazz, you go to holtonlice.com, click our property management back. And if you'd like to work with us directly to start buying these properties and having us manage these properties so you could work remotely and, you know, build your real estate investment business. The first place you want to start is here on the MLS search and analysis show. You want to have me work with you to give you customized videos, just like I'm doing for my man, Jeff. And to do that, you go to the property search for sale tab on holtonlice.com. You click the MLS search and analysis show and you order yourself a package. We like to sell them in packs, right? We, we could do one, but we also sell three packs, four packs and 10 packs. Uh, my opinion, the more, uh, the bigger the pack, the better you're doing because after you purchase it, we send you like a questionnaire and we get all this information about you, your wants, your needs, your goals, desires, risk tolerance, what you're trying to accomplish, right? We try to get to know you. And then I make you a video based upon what your wants and your needs and your goals are and what we could actually do in the market. Because 
not all of you guys uh, have expectations that are accurate. And that's my job, right? That's what you pay me for is to set the proper expectations. If you knew everything about the Cleveland market, there wouldn't really be a need for me and Holton Wise, right? So uh, I try to best pair what is possible with what you're trying to do. And, you know, from there, it's a give take relationship. It's a lot of back and forth. And eventually we, we get together and we, you know, really get you the perfect deal at the perfect time for the perfect price, right? But it takes some time. It's a numbers game, right? Not every deal is going to pan out. So uh, if you're trying to be a real estate investor, guys, you got to know, you got to be in for the long haul. You don't get to just snap your fingers and then you built a portfolio. It takes work to build a portfolio. If you don't want to put in the time to analyze these properties, you're going to make mistakes and you're going to overpay for properties and you never, ever want to do that, right? Measure twice, cut once, guys. That's, that's the name of the game. That's how the sausage is made, baby. That's all I've got for today's show, folks. Thank you for sticking with me. As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise. And this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. 